Most training programmes as a doctor will require you to carry out either a quality improvement project or an audit, but this requirement is mandatory and is often needed as part of your appraisal, and it begins right at the very beginning in the foundation training programme, so essentially as soon as you finish medical school. Now if you haven't carried out either a quality improvement project or an audit whilst in medical school, you're probably wondering what they are, what's the difference, and how you go about carrying one out. Hi, my name's Colin, I'm a junior doctor working in the UK, and I've recently just done a degree in medical education as well. Now in this video I'm just going to be talking about what a quality improvement project and what an audit is, how you go about carrying one out, I'm going to also talk about the differences between the two, and why it's important that you understand and implement it as part of your training. First of all, let's start with audits. So I'm going to start by reading out a simple definition. An audit is an assessment of a certain aspect of healthcare to see if it is attaining a recognised standard. So basically, you're looking at a part of your own clinical practice or the clinical practice of the team that you're working in and seeing if it's meeting a standard or a guideline that's usually at either a trust level or on a national level. Now, an example of this might be if you're working in a GP practice. So essentially, a guide, the guidelines below state that all patients who have a diagnosis of high blood pressure should receive a urine blood test at least once a year. Now, if you were to carry out an audit on this, what you'd do is you'd essentially look at all the patients within the practice who have been diagnosed with high blood pressure and you'd see if your GP practice is meeting that standard by looking to see if 100% of the patients have had the blood test and if not, you may start thinking about some changes you can make to make sure that those patients are going to be meeting that recognised standards. So now let's move on to quality improvement projects. Now quality improvement projects are a little bit more vague and I'll go through a definition as well. So the definition of a quality improvement project is a systemic and coordinated approach to solving a problem and using a specific method and tool with the aim of bringing about a measurable improvement. And to be perfectly honest I don't really like that definition. Essentially a quality improvement project is a project which focuses on making an improvement within your practice or within the team's practice you're working in but there isn't really a set standard so you can be a little bit more creative with what you're doing and essentially the changes you make might either improve patients experiences or your own experience as a healthcare worker. Now, an example of a quality improvement project might be the implementation of a handover tool during junior doctors handovers each day. There's no standard to compare that against so what essentially you're doing is you're making a change and identifying if that's made an improvement and if it has you're going about facilitating a way to keep that change in place. So what's the difference between a quality improvement project and an audit? Well essentially there is some overlap. Essentially you're trying to bring about a change which improves either your own experience as a healthcare worker or patients experiences within a hospital so that they have a better outcome. Now where it, there's a difference between the two like I said before is audits focus on comparing what you're doing to a standard whereas quality improvement projects can be like I said before as well more creative there's no standard to compare it to but you might recognize that something needs to be changed and that can facilitate an improvement in either the healthcare environment you're working in or it can improve patient care another similarity is both quality improvement projects and audits can be repeated and this is known either as a quality improvement project cycle or an audit cycle well, for starters, quality improvement projects and audits have different timescales and they use a different format to carry them out as well. The other issue is some training programmes prefer one over the other. So for example, the foundation training programme wants you to do a quality improvement project, but it's not so fussed about you carrying out an audit. And say you were to carry out an audit as part of the foundation training programme, but not a quality improvement project, well you might get pulled up at your ARCP for not having done what they've asked you to do. And to read a quote from the UK Foundation Programme, the curriculum requires that the F2 doctor demonstrate significant personal contrib contribution to a quality improvement project. How do you go about carrying a quality improvement project or an audit? Well, let's start with a quality improvement project. So typically what you do as part of a quality improvement project is you'd focus on a model and there's a model of improvement that's typically used for this type of project. And you can see this model for improvement in the cycle below. The first stage involves figuring out what you're trying to do. Essentially, you're coming up with an aim of your quality improvement project. Now, as you can see from the PDSA cycle, the aim is going to involve figuring out what you're trying to achieve, identifying how you, you will know when you've actually achieved it, and figuring out what needs to be changed in order to achieve the result. Once you work all this out, that will essentially allow you to plan your project. Then you need to put what you're thinking into action and do what you intended. Essentially, you make the change you wanted to make. Now you'll need to work out if that change is 
has actually made a difference and if that difference is what you intended. Sometimes you can make a change but it doesn't make things better but instead makes things worse. This stage involves analysing the results of your change. Finally, you need to figure out if you're going to plan to make any more changes or if you're going to make the original change permanent and fully implement it. But as you can see, this model is a cycle. So if you do plan on making further changes, you essentially go around the cycle again, plan the change, you do the change, you study the change and you act upon the change that you've implemented. Now, how do you go about carrying out an audit? Well, different sources follow different cycles for audits, but the one I'm going to use is a five stage cycle, kind of like a quality improvement project, it's got different stages. So as you can see from this cycle, the first stage is to identify what you're going to investigate and what standards there are already out there that you can compare it against. This stage is going to involve a bit of background reading. You're also going to want to consider who's going to be involved in the project. Is it going to be just you? Are you going to be working as part of a team? Are you going to be part of a multidisciplinary team? Or are you going to be taking part in a national audit? across different hospitals, you kind of get the idea. But also, you're going to need to figure out how you're going to go about getting the data. Do you need the patient's notes? Do you need a computer system, etc., etc. Now you're going to decide what the criteria is needed for the audit. This involves choosing a standard that you're going to be comparing your results against. This is also going to help you decide what are going to be acceptable standards for your results. For example, if a guideline states that 80% of your patients should be getting X, and your hospital is only providing 20% of your patients with X, that it's obviously not acceptable and you need to implement a change to improve that result. It is here that you should also identify the inclusion and exclusion criteria as well. So in some circumstances patients may not be suitable to be included as part of the audit. Then the next stage involves actually going away and collecting the data. This will depend on what kind of data you're collecting. Once you have the data you'll be able to collect the results and compare this with a standard that you've chose during the previous stage. It is here where you'll identify if an improvement has actually been made. Now moving on to the next stage. It's here that you'll have the opportunity to present your results to your team, for example in a department audit meeting. And it's at the end of this meeting where an agreement will be made regarding recommendations for change. So basically you'll decide on what's going to happen next and if you're going to keep this change and make it permanent. The final stage of the cycle is identifying if the change you've made has improved the results against the standard. To do this, essentially you're repeating the audit cycle and seeing if the results have improved. This doesn't have to be carried out by yourself, and if you've already moved rotation, it can be carried out by one of the new doctors you're working with in the department, and they're basically carrying out and continuing on with your audit. I realise that's a bit of a brief summary about quality improvement projects and audits, but it's something I didn't really fully understand until I started working as a foundation doctor. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.